I never really believed in magic. But I used to like it. I thought it was real. One day I got older and someone showed me a magic trick then showed me how they did it. Since that day, whenever I see a magic trick, I look around. I see how everyone else is being fooled. I look at the happiness and astonishment on their faces. But me, the magic trick isn't the main appetizer anymore. It's merely a prequel. A prequel before the real show. And that real show is showing exactly how the magic trick was done. That's the only thing I care about now. All right, let's get started. Okay. From our yard. Okay. It was cold. I was gonna make a fire. So a lot of wood in this, this area right here next to our house. I opened up the back gate. I'm throwing wood, bringing it inside the house. My wife's inside. She was actually wrapping gifts, so we thought it was a good idea that they, that our youngest two, go outside and play with chalk on the, the back patio. Do not let them go on the dirt in the backyard. We keep them close. All right, so they're in the patio, and he's chucking wood. All right. Wait. He's chucking wood at kids? Or what? They was playing with chalk, and I came in the house. I saw them there. Wait, you, wait, you saw them, and you came in the house. Well, who, who was with them? I went in the house. I came back out. I didn't see them now. Wait a minute. Okay, hold on. We got to go back on this one. They were in the backyard on the patio, and you were in the backyard, but when I'm confused. You left the backyard while they were in the backyard on the back patio so you can chop wood in California, and you chucked the wood back into the backyard, and then you went back, and then you saw them there, and you walked past them, went into the house, and then you didn't see them, so you asked your wife, wait. I immediately went back in, asked my wife, did you see the boys? She said, no, they should be outside playing with chalk. I said, well, I didn't see them. So I came back outside and I started searching my backyard. I searched the whole thing. I realized that I left the gate open and I panicked, came inside the house, searched the house, me and my wife. Well, great. They're not old enough to run anywhere or get really, really far, even though I I would have never left my kids in the backyard to play by themselves. I mean, these are toddlers we're talking about here. Okay. Everybody make mistakes. I mean, Michael Jackson held blanket over the balcony. So let's see where this when goes. When did they tell you they noticed the kids go missing? The the The... The timeline that we received from them is the kids have been gone 15 to 20 minutes prior to them making the call to us. So they noticed the kids gone, they searched the house, they searched the immediate area, and uh, I believe Trezell actually got in his car and went searching in his car, came back, and when they came to the realization they needed help, they called us. So you're saying from the moment they noticed Orson and Orrin West go missing, they told you that it was within 15 to 20 minutes of that time that they called police. Per their statement, that's correct. What time exactly did police get a call for service? Uh, the call we, the call got dispatched at uh, 17:43, which would be 5:43 p.m. in the evening. Okay. On Monday, the 21st okay. of December. So you're saying okay. that's when it was dispatched. When did the call come in just a few minutes Five, prior to 40, Yeah, it only, took, it only took minutes once the call came in to dispatch the call out. And we were on scene within six minutes. Okay, so that would be uh, police arriving uh, by 5.50-ish. At least, yeah. Quick okay. response. Um, we spoke in the past about where police start with investigations like this. Mm -hmm. Missing children's. Okay, note what he just said, John. And let's go back to their interview and see if the information we got from the sheriff 
is matching to what they're saying about their story. All right, let's go. Once that head and pan out, I got in the van. I looked down the street, most directions. It was getting dark, getting cold, and I got in the van and I hit a bunch of corners. I went down this street. I turned my light on. I searched. I searched. I called their names. Talked to a gentleman on the street on the other side over there. He didn't see me. So I'm seeing things that I don't know. I mean, they you look a little younger, but I'm seeing things that uh, iffy, sloppy parenting. Um, leaving your children in the backyard to play by themselves. Um, but at least I'm, I'm seeing some good signs, too. I mean, if they called the cops almost immediately from when the children were playing in the backyard. Wait. I mean, that that would be assuming that they were playing in the backyard and everything he's saying is the truth so far. But, hey, innocent until proven guilty. Some of this stuff is wacky. Um, okay, so he's out, he's looking for them, he comes back home, and let's see what happens next. So then I came home, and I told my wife, we need to call the cops. Uh, it's getting dark, and I need help, we gotta get going. So I called mm -hmm. the cops, cops came. First thing they did was tell us to stay in the house so they can get a hold of us, and they had us just sitting there, and we wanted to keep searching, but everybody came out in droves, and I wanted to thank you guys that night, but we couldn't go outside. The cops told us the best are out here. The best are out here searching. And we appreciate it. And nobody ever could tell, we could never talk to anybody. And now. I, I, I mean, if I'm speaking for myself, the cops tell me to stay home and my child is missing. I'm not going to listen to the cops, but I'm not going to fault him for listening to the cops. So that's not really big. We just want to thank everybody. We really want to and, thank you guys. Uh, please, if anybody has seen them, Please call. Let somebody know. It, it call the cops. Call California C the city police department. Call them and let them know what you've seen. If you see anything, our boys, they they are going to be rambunctious. Okay, Ugh. they are going to be here in this area, and I really would like to go in the houses but it's not because I want to invade people's privacy. I just want to know if make they sure. make sure that's it. Because I don't, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. If you got any questions. Oh, no, you're good. Oh, okay. I, I was just going to say, you know, this is the first time we're hearing from you guys and I can't imagine what you guys are going through. I can't even fathom it. Um, for you guys, for people who are thinking uh, that there's some kind of foul play involved, um, you know, we just spoke to the biological mother. She says she had a conversation with you guys um, and that she thinks there's some kind of foul play involved. That she thinks you guys did something. And that's understandable. What's your, what's your response to that? That's understandable. I would think the same thing. Yep. I mean, that's exactly the point. And if we can find our, find our babies, then guess what? That's, that's no. And that's all I want is to find our babies. That's it. And I talked to her this morning, and I really wanted to. If I was to listen to him from what everything I've been told, there's some possible kidnapper killer in his neighborhood, but they don't go seeking victims. They'll just grab one if an opportunity presents itself, and it did for these two little boys. think I need some help on this one. JD, give me the background on these guys. Anything to keep you from making the blunder you did with Terry Speaks, Master. 34-year-old Trevor Philip West was born September 24th of 1986 from Bakersfield, California. He married 31-year-old Jocelyn West, who was born December 6th of 1989. They have two biological children together. They have two foster children, and then Oren and Orson West are their three- and four-year-old children. They fostered in 2018, then adopted in 2019. Interesting fact, Master. Jacqueline's Yahoo email is Mama Wanda. So he has two biological children. They're the oldest. Then he has two children he's fostering. And then he have these two children, which are the youngest, which he adopted. 
affirmative master. Okay, so he has six children. What does he do for a living? He makes hip hop beats. <laughs> okay. All right. What does most of his income come from? With his LinkedIn account okay. now removed from the internet, it appears that he forced his children. I mean, I know I'm gonna keep watching. Got to collect more things to look at. But uh, um, where were the four children? Mr. West reported that the children were with his mother that day. Okay. All right. Thanks. Was he going? I really want to tell her that um, I am completely sorry because we were entrusted with her children, and they came to us, and they became our children. And we named them, and they are they are our children, and so we want them back. So please, if y'all could get back on your what you guys are doing. We'll sh we should be able to get a hold of somebody, but they took all of our tech, so they wanted to, I guess, uh, just rule us out, which makes sense as part of the investigation. So that's pretty much it. Have you guys, um, you talked to the police all last night? Yes. Um, what? So you guys willfully gave them your everything? Technology, yes. The car? Yes. Did they get a, how did they get a search warrant? I, I, oh, no I don't see why they got one, but they got one. Yeah. We would have let them take one. it. Shady, how did they get we a search warrant? Penal code 1524, chapter 3. Oh, it makes sense. What did they take from the house? Master, you're merely seconds away from finding out from them, but electronic devices such as computers and their cell phones. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, we would have let them take one, anything. But... We would have let them take everything. We let them come in and search with us. We, we asked them to come do that. What did they take? Just tech. And that's it. Like our phones. From the house, though, did they? Oh, well, uh, I guess, should I answer that? Or? Answer it to us, yeah. Okay. So, into the, into the, okay, and I guess, I don't even know. I see. Yeah, we seriously felt like we needed to be out here. We did. Uh, again, we were told the best are out here looking already just to stay put. They have more questions. And there was literally a cop with us the whole time in and there. We was, he had sitting down. We would ask, can we go help? They had to sit he down. Said, nope. He said, no, we got the best out there. So we it's need not, you guys here in case we have more questions. I don't want you guys thinking we, we didn't try. We actually we looked tried. before we called we the police. Looked, yes. And I imagine the uh, mind-boggling part is the search for information. What happened? Where are they? Yes. Et cetera, et cetera. And we're, yeah. And, and just so we are able to present the information correctly, um, at what time did you guys notice your kids went missing? And at what time were they reported missing to the police? It's about, I, I believe, I think it was about 4.30, going on 5, it was getting dark, like I said. 5-ish. Five 5-ish. Five That's about it. That's when everything played out. And then when did you guys call the police to report that missing? I After we searched yeah. a little bit around here, we it was dark, so we definitely were, we got worried. Uh, would, would you say it was maybe within an hour, or a couple hours? No, it was within minutes of us getting finished with our search. Okay. It was within minutes. Okay. What do you guys want people at home to understand um, about this situation? For them, you know, even speaking about what you guys are feeling is difficult. What do you want them at home to understand about this whole situation? We're going through it. It's difficult. I, I mean, everybody's making their own, you know, their own conclusions. They don't know anything. We don't, we're not sure, exa like everything, we're not sure. We, we said what we knew, and if anybody has seen them uh, or anything, please call the police department. Would you be willing to provide pictures, or do you have any? They, uh, I have older pictures. All my newest were on my phone. Okay. A lot yeah. of people are speaking of this as, you know, after the math, past tense. I want to talk about your kids in present tense. 
what kind of what kind of boys are these? Tell, tell us about the boys. Very playful, very rambunctious, and they do love to wrestle. They they do love to kind of get rough with each They're other. Kids. They're kids. Of course, they would love to go out, but we would. So during the pandemic, we weren't trying to go, you know, out here, and so we stay inside. Yes, yes we did. We searched before we called the cops. That's that what was you're that's what we were yeah. saying. What time did they come up missing? They came missing right before it got dark. <clears throat> And then we call. I, I searched the property. I even drove around the, the whole, this neighborhood right here. I even talked to a gentleman on that side, one of those streets over there. I said, "Did you see my some little black kids?" You and that way looking for them. That's the way I was gonna come. But when I came back home, I decided to call the. Chetty, how long did he search for the boys before he called the cops? The neighbor surveillance shows 4:33 to 4:39 p.m. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, all right, let's keep going. Cops, because it was dark. Like, they couldn't have got away that fast. And, and why did it take two people to go in the house and leave two kids out here by themselves? It should have been one parent going in and one parent right here watching the child, not two parents going in the house oh, oh, and leaving so you, two little kids out here by themselves for 10 minutes. No, they were in the backyard. And the, so back gate was out the back yard. and the back gate was open and I was getting wood so from this lot here. Been unresponsible and left the gate open. I'm left so the glad I'm outside. I am thankful I am a paranoid person. Makes me a better parent. Left the gate open, left some little kids outside with the gate open. All All right, let, hold on, JD. I want to hear from him. The door and ran down the street, which could be, but my training experience, you start from the inside out, always. So that's what occurred. My officer started from the inside. They searched the house. They searched the yards. They searched the uh, shed in the back, and then they started to widen their search out into the neighborhood. Got it. Um, and from my understanding, it was the very next day that there was a search warrant executed at the home. That's correct. Uh, there needs to be probable cause for a search warrant to be granted by a judge. Mm -hmm. What was that probable cause to go in there with a search warrant? Has that since been returned to the parents? Some of it. Okay. Some of it, to the best of my knowledge. I know for sure they've, they've received their phones back. Was their car at one point towed from their home? Yes. Excuse me. I apologize. No, yes. Okay. Um, were uh, scent dogs used, correct? Correct. What was the purpose of that? Uh, to, to, the, to, to locate the children. You know, to pick up the scent of the kids in the house. Once they get the scent of the kids in the house, then they, they like us, start to widen their search, but uh, the dogs never picked up any scent outside the house. Can you put that in, in terms of, of uh, why that is important to know, that there was no scent of the kids outside of the home? Uh, it, it doesn't necessarily mean anything in particular, but it does. Who saw these? When was the last time these children were seen by anyone else? That very officer said, that Mr. West's mom saw the children, although he would not give a, an exact date. So he won't say when, but the children at some point were seen by his mother. Okay. Their adopted grandmother. That's this correct, is in California, Master. so they were in California. Yes, but you must know, Master, two days prior to the children going missing, Mr. West and his wife took the other four children Christmas shopping without them. Wait, JD. So they, they, a week prior, they. So if they, if the, the two kids that are missing stay because they're the youngest, and the other four went to his grandmother's house because they had to stay with the younger children, then why would they leave and it just be them two and the oldest four children, but not the babies? Where were the babies? If this was called a surveillance camera, seems 
a bit strange and a bit odd. Is there anything else that's fishy? Because I I want to I want to put all of this together of what I'm getting at so far. Right. His main source of income is coming from fostering these children. He has four, two that he's fostering, two that he's adopted, the two missing, uh, or in an arson, or the two that are adopted. They're the ones that's missing. And then he has two biological. The biological and the two fosters, those four that we know are alive and well, are taken away to a foster preliminary. They're going to do in any kind of case like this. Okay. All right. So his mother on December 21st had the four oldest children and he had these two. He leaves these two in the backyard. You see a picture of their backyard. Flat, wide open. The best thing is a gate. Okay. All right. This is different for me. Only time I, when my boys were at this age and they're very young, I played with them in the uh, my big backyard is uh, when I was taking pictures of them while they were playing, meaning my direct focus was on them. I've never just had them at that age in the backyard where my focus was on something else. But his focus was not only on something else. His focus was on something that's outside of the yard, meaning that he's leaving them in the backyard to use chalk on the ground while he leaves the backyard with the gate open to go chop some wood. And he says he tosses the wood into the backyard, even though he knows the children are in the, are in the backyard. And then he says he goes in, he walks past them, and he goes into the house. And when he goes into the house, he leaves the children in the backyard again with the gate wide open. And then he says he comes back out and they're gone. Now, we know that he only searched for the children for approximately five minutes. In hindsight, sitting in my chair five minutes seems like an incredibly amount of short times but it's easy for me to say that sitting in my chair i i know at certain times five minutes can appear to feel like a very long time especially if you feel that your children were just in the backyard and you're driving down the street you're panicking where they are you're not going to think they're super duper far uh, in that situation five minutes may seem in your mind longer than what it is so i'm in hindsight, sitting in my chair, when this has not happened to me, when I'm of normal sound mind and body, that seems crazy that he would only search for five minutes and then rush back home. But in the panic mode, people react differently. Okay, so he comes home, he stays outside and his wife is inside of the house. And then the cops arrive shortly after. They are very open to the police. They give the police all of their stuff immediately. All right. But prior to all of this, that no one has on record confirmed, been able to see and verify the children on this day uh, or uh, up to like a couple days or maybe a week. He didn't verify when the mother saw him. But we have a surveillance video of him and his wife and the other four children going shopping for Christmas. And they don't have these two children with them. That's what we know so far of what has taken place. Um right now okay I, I guess my work here is is done in the video master you can't in the video uh, here what do you mean there's nothing else to do jd what else, what else is there to do we know what happened so far in the case and the police chief has the he's working with the fbi yeah, they're working with other in, uh, departments to solve this. They are passionate about the case. They have far more expertise than I do. They have far more information that they haven't released to the public yet. What else is there to do on this case? But didn't you say you want more views? Yes, you are right. I did say that I want more views for my channel. I don't understand where you're getting it, JD. If you talk about this case seven days a week, you will get more views for your channel. Why would I talk about this case every single day? If there aren't any new breaking news and the police isn't coming forward because they want to make sure they get credible witnesses and information to come in, there isn't any new breaking news, what other video do I need to make about this case? Statistics show that when you find the most popular case that's unsolved in a year, either the person is still missing or... 
the murder has not been solved. All you have to do is make a video about it every single day. You don't need any new updates. All you need to do is have wild theories about the video. Make your wild theories on the video. You will entice a mob-like crowd who will come to your channel every single day, hoping and wishing. You don't need to break any new news. You can even make the same video rehashing the news from the day before. YouTube Analytics has shown that this will drive your subscription count at a staggering, mind-blowing rate. So if you talk about this every single day, you do not need to worry about the substance for what you are saying. All you need to do is put these boys in your title and also use their picture and then your channel will finally thrive. <laughs>
want to do it so bad. But I am cursed with actually caring. I am cursed with caring. Because to care for Orin, to care for Orson, it means doing in your brain what you think will actually give the best outcome to their case, to their life. If you make a mistake from ignorance, it is a-okay. But if you make a mistake from greed, I'll save that for last. The way I found out about this case looks like what you just saw earlier, except for I recorded that for you all. In real life, I sat at that computer for hours and hours looking up every single thing that I can. I did just look up two interviews. And it made me angry because I had to look at other true crime YouTubers' videos on this. And it reminded me of December of 2019 when we did a case by the name of a guy, by the name of Shane Carey. I remember that vividly. The true crime community came off of watching Chris Watts on a porch and dissecting him and having people do body language on him and people saying crazy stuff like, if you look to the left, I learned this somewhere, so it must be true. I watch people do this stuff. And Chris Watts was guilty, so when it came for Shane Carey, they did the same thing, and they vilified this man. They sent the entire lynch mob at this guy, only to find out that his wife was murdered and had her baby cut out of her stomach by another woman who wanted her baby. So he lost his baby, his wife, and vilified from an online hate mob. I used to be just like you all. I was led astray way before YouTube existed. Way, way, way back in the early 2000s during the Scott Peterson case because it came on a channel called Court TV every single day and it didn't need to come on TV every single day. But it did. And I followed it. And they used my caring for Lacey and Connor Peterson, my always looking into this and trying to find anybody that's talking about this daily to give me my dosage of this case. They use that to get their ratings. But if you go back in hindsight and you look, how many days should they have talked about to Scott Peterson? What big events happened with Scott Peterson? I can name them for you. They found out about Amber Fry. He did his 2020 interview. They found the bodies of Lacey and Connor. And then he tried to run away and dye his hair and his beard. After that, he was arrested. Could have been four updates, but that case ran every single day. And that's why I was so let down by true crime YouTubers that are covering this every single day, milking it for every single penny. For what? What can I talk about tomorrow that has happened that's so big over today? What can I talk about the day after tomorrow? What can I talk about Thursday? What can I talk about Friday? What is happening with Orin and Orson seven days a week to continue to make all of these videos other than driving your numbers through the roof? I am cursed with actually caring. When I saw the sheriff's interview and I saw him pause during his interview and he made sure to say that he's getting all of these assumptions, all of these crazy theories. So he has to change the method and how they release information to the public. Um, again, there's a lot of speculation. There's a lot of um, belief on what we should be doing when in fact we're probably already doing that or things we should places we should be looking where we probably already looked and that's okay.
you know, people can speculate um, as long as they know or I would hope that they believe that we're doing everything we can to look at these kids. I mean, if, if you've thought of it, we've probably looked there, but that's okay. If you don't think we've looked there, please share that information with us, and we will. You know, a lot of people have called in and gave us clues or tips. We haven't directly gotten back to them, but we have followed up on those clues. So anything that's viable that comes in where we can have a follow-up, follow-up meaning something specific, a specific location, a specific person, um, you know, a specific vehicle with a license plate, we can follow up on all that stuff. Um, it's, it's the, you know, well, I think I saw this, and I maybe saw that, and, um, you know, I had a dream the other night that this happened. You know, all, all that's good stuff, and I appreciate it. And again, I would never turn down any help. We're, we're, we're not closed off to anything. But to help us, you know, we need specifics. And um, if you've never been in this business or been down this road, everyone's going to have speculations of what they feel that we should be doing, and that's okay. Um, they watch a lot of TV, and, that, and that's okay too. Uh, but uh, I just want to assure everybody that we, we are doing everything possible to find these kids. Or how they want to run their case based upon these crazy speculations. And I see it here. I see it here on YouTube the same exact way with the same exact theory. I got so angry. I was talking about it with my friend Stephanie Harlow. Let me let you hear a little snippet of what she said in our conversation. Speculative makes us look bad, maybe, but the assumptions, the assertions, the accusations definitely make us look bad. It's, em it's embarrassing. embarrassing. It's embarrassing. The speculations are okay, but the assumptions, the stating someone's actual guilt the driving, the people that want to see this every day, like I used to want to see the Scott Peterson trial every day, and using that against them to come to your YouTube page when you got nothing the next day. You have nothing to talk about. And just simply using these people's emotions. Speculative. I'm a father. I would never leave my children in no backyard by themselves. Are you crazy? I would never leave no gate open to go across and get wood to toss it back in my yard where two little babies are sitting there drawing on the ground. I would never do nothing like that. That seems crazy to me, but as crazy to me as it seems, I have no problem sitting back and seeing, was this just some stupid, horrible father or a murderer? can speculate but I don't know and I have no problem letting the professionals do their job to find out so I'm going to show you guys how it's supposed to look how a real true crime looks after you hear about what's going on in it because I want to help these babies. And I don't lie to my audience. I don't think that these little babies are alive. Whether it's their father and his wife. Their adopted father to be specific. Or some random guy who walked down the street. And saw a man leave his two children in the backyard. And. Saw an opportunity and took them. Who knows? Either way, such a horrible, cruel world that we live in. You better hold your babies tight. You better hold your babies tight. I remember a quote from the movie Seven. And it's crazy because I'm 40 years old, but I was younger back then. And when I saw this scene, it hit me. Hit me like a thousand nails. It was the scene where Gwyneth Paltrow was telling Morgan Freeman that she was pregnant and she hadn't told her husband Brad Pitt yet. And Morgan Freeman being this old, beat-up, tired detective who have seen it all. All of the dangers, all of the horrors in the world. And after seeing it all, he looked at Gwyneth Paltrow and he said... But if you choose to have this baby, you spoil that kid every chance you get. 
You better spoil that baby with every chance you get. That's what I thought of when I thought of the Cali City Boys case. That's what I thought of. Regardless of who did it or why they aren't home. We live in a cruel, cruel world. And because of it, this is what I do. I wake up. I brush my teeth. I cut my hair. And I always walk down the hallway. Knowing I'm going to hear some horror. Be it January the 6th and people are actually trying to take over our capital. But time keeps going. So I keep going, living my life, be it playing with my dogs in the backyard, laying on the couch to watch television. But then I walk down that hall again. Now, a new president is coming into office. Time is passing by. So I go on living my life. I drink my wine. I enjoy the nice sunset on my patio. Time goes by. I walk down my hallway. And again, you hear crazy stuff in the news. More cases. Real life friends losing their lives. But I keep on living. And then one day, I'm reminded that there's no such thing as magic. One day, the magic trick is being revealed. And on that day, that day that crushes my heart, I hear the sad news. And that's when I normally cover a case. Today we regret to bring you the news no one wanted to hear. Today the bodies of two 